All right. Lord, I just thank you today. Thank you for all you've done for us. And I just pray this morning that you speak to us through your word, encourage us and challenge us as we, as we just learn, as we grow and, and celebrate your resurrection. Thank you for your presence in this place this morning. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. amen. So anyone here ever have, do you have like a side hustle? Anyone here got a side hustle? Raising, any, you know what a side hustle is? You know what a side hustle is? You're all looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay, that may be true, but so, you know, side hustle, a little side job, make a little extra money. I had this side hustle and it became my main hustle and now it's becoming my side hustle again because I love being here all the time at Gateway and so it's, it was my main business for a long time and so now I'm kind of bringing it down because um, I'm over here at the church a lot and so, but my side hustle is, is picking. How many know what picking is? Okay, good. We got some pickers in the house. Any pickers? You like to go around? You know, not nose, just, you know, find, find the stuff, getting a good deal. And so I have this, you know, I'll buy stuff. I have this warehouse, and I'm always out there finding different things, and then I sell them on eBay and whatever. So I got some good picking stories for us today, but it'll all make sense in the end. But one of the important things for picking is you have to be able to discern the value. Got a little ring in there. You got to be able to discern the value. One time I was at this uh, sale and everything was a mess and it was all kind of crazy and I'm, I'm looking around and I'm crawling under the bed and I find this box and I pull it out and it's this old chess set from the, God bless you, it's this old chess set from the 80s and it's like an electronic chess set and I'm looking it up and I'm trying to find information on it and I'm like, I think this is worth something. And so I get it, I go to the guy, I'm like, how much is this? And he's like, $10. I'm like, take my money. And so I buy it. And I'm trying to figure out how to use it. It's electronic. So it's like, it's made of wood, but it's the 80s and it's electronic. And I don't know how to use it. And so I end up taking it down to downtown St. Pete. And I go to the chess club. I'm like, surely the chess club is going to recognize this item and, and know about it. And so it was just like, you know, like on TV, like when they go down there with their item and they talk to the professional, it was just like that. I felt, I felt pretty cool, actually. I thought I was pretty, so I'm there talking to the guy and the guy, I'm like, I think it's worth a lot of money. He's like, oh, I doubt it. He goes, this is old. This is, my laptop is way better than this. It's, it has a better computer and he's talking about, and then the other guy is like, He's like, yeah, it's, these aren't worth anything. I had one. I threw mine away. I'm like, is it in the trash right now? Because I'll pay you. And he's like, he's like, no, 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 it's long gone. And I'm like, and so they figured out how to operate it, but they had no idea of its value, even though they were chess experts. Man, I sold that, suck, that thing for $1,200. I was like, you might be good at chess, but if you can't discern value, you're going to miss out. Amen? And a lot of times people do not discern value in things and in people. I mean, you all been on the wrong end of that, right? When someone didn't discern your value? You know what I'm talking about? we all been there. Recently, a few weeks ago, probably two months ago, I purchased this big thing of and this will make sense. All my stories will make sense. I'm not just talking about all the cool stuff that I bought. You know, it's not just about that. But I purchased all these 16 millimeter reels of film. And they used to play them in like airplanes when they would play films. So, we're, you know, 70s, maybe 80s. And so they would play these in different venues. And so I got like Battlestar Galactica, Twilight Zone, Raiders of the Lost Dark. And so. They're, they're pretty cool. So I joined this, this film club on Facebook, and I, I got in this conversation with somebody about a different film that was for sale, and the guy's like, hey, that film, not mine, but he goes, that guy's asking too much. It's not worth that. And I was like, well, you know what? It's, it's worth whatever someone will pay for it. Because if somebody pays for it, it suddenly becomes worth that. Right? If nobody pays for it, then it's not worth that. And he's arguing with me about this. And I'm like, I don't know how you don't understand this concept because if somebody buys it, it suddenly becomes worth that value. It might not be worth it to you, but it was worth it to them because they ponied up the money. 
It's like Beanie Babies. Huh? When I go to our yard sale, they're always like, oh, look at these Beanie Babies. They're worthless. <laughs> Nobody wants to pay for the Beanie I'm sorry. I know Grandma got them Beanie Babies for her retirement. You're going to have to help her out because those Beanie Babies, nobody's buying Beanie Babies anymore. And so they might have been expensive, but now they're not. You know why? Because nobody's paying the money for them, right? So they lost their value. So what about our value before God? See, when we started out this life, we started out kind of in a way hopeless and really without value. Let me read to you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So we started out with like this no obvious value, helpless and hopeless. We were like that thing at the yard sale that nobody wanted. We had, we had a yard sale here a few weeks ago. There was a couple things, man, I could not sell. You know what they were. You might have loved them, but nobody wanted them gold chairs or those pillars. I'm just saying. I was trying. I was offering money after a while. I was like, five bucks. I'll give you five bucks if you put that in your truck. (laughs) But watch this. This is what happened. See, Jesus didn't just see value in us. He set the value. Oh, man, let me tell you, this is, when we get this, like when we really, really get this, this is life, eternity changing. Because we get it for ourselves and we get it for others. Like if we really get this, like I just, he set the value for human beings. And we started out really without so much value in ourselves. Because God is perfect so we could even be, like, amazing. I see some amazing people here, but compared to God, not so much. But then Jesus did something in setting our value. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, it says, For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, it's like, it's rare for like even a good person to die for you, right? You know, that's, that's pretty unusual, you know? Like, like if somebody here gave their life for somebody else, that would be, wow, that would be unusual. And he would, for a good guy, he stood in there and, you know, once in a while you see those stories Somebody rescues somebody and, and dies in the process, and they gave their life for somebody, and that's it's rare, it's unusual. But for an evil person, a person that didn't love and didn't care for the person giving them the sacrifice, like Apostle Paul, who hated Jesus, right? He was he was killing Jesus' followers. Jesus died for him. People that have cursed God and said, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. He died for them. He's like, oh, I don't hate you at all. I love you so much. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were away from him, he's like, I love you so much. I mean, it's easy to love somebody that already loves us, right? Right? Imagine somebody spitting in your face. I mean, that literally happened. Jesus on the cross, they spit in his face, and he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. While he's dying, also like being crucified, which is pretty bad. I mean, could you imagine there's somebody spitting in your face and being like, Lord, don't hold this against them. I love them too much. I know some of you guys would be ready to throw down. You'd be like, okay, I'm going to forgive you, but after I hit you, repent, rely on grace, then I'll forgive No, but right there, man, that's some serious love, right? See, and, and what, what is so amazing is that price that he paid for us on the cross 
dying and rising on the third day, the day we celebrate today. Like, what higher price could be paid? Like, if a really nice person here died for another nice person here, that's like this. The God of the universe became a human being and did, died this horrible death, right? Like, what, what's, what's, what's higher than that? A million dollars? No. A million mediocre people that are all imperfect? No, the God of the universe. So like I was arguing with that guy on Facebook, I'm like, what's it worth? It's only worth what someone will pay for it. That means the souls right here in this room look around at all these people. Different races and ages and backgrounds and lifestyles and incomes. Everybody different. You know what? The highest possible price in the universe was paid for your soul. And mine. You know what that does? That sets our value. You are priceless. He looks at us and says, these people are precious. And we kind of take this whole journey of following Jesus, kind of really discovering that more and more. Because like somebody that doesn't like treat somebody as precious doesn't understand the, the value that Jesus paid. That's why we say loving God and loving people. It goes hand in hand. There's no higher price. It'd be like somebody bought up all the Beanie Babies in the universe, right? But your grandma still has a bag of them. They finally might actually be worth something. <laughs> in some alternate universe, you know, there's a Beanie Baby that's actually worth something. I know. So I'm going to get five people coming up to me after service telling me, you know, you don't you know about that Beanie Baby? I'm going to show you on eBay. I'm like, you can get it for $4.99, free shipping. <laughs> but the price, when it, it just it sets our value. And, that's, and this wasn't something that we earned. It wasn't something that we did. It wasn't because we were good enough. It wasn't because we were smart enough. It wasn't because we were likable enough or dressed enough or, or did enough good deeds. No, he just said, you know what? That looks like... Not something great. And this is what I do, really you know, have been doing for a living, was just I find stuff that looks like junk to other people. And I say, no, that's not junk. That's valuable. Yeah. And I'm going to pay the money for it, and then someone else is going to pay me ten times the money for it because they're going to see that value too. And it's awesome. And that's what he's done. And he linked, and this, listen to this, watch this. He's linked our value with him by doing this, by paying this price. See, because now we're not saved, we're not Christians because we were good enough and went to enough church services and stopped cursing, but only saying these words when we're driving and, you know. So now I'm good enough. No. See, he gives us his perfection. When he died on the cross, the perfect Christ, the perfect being dying on that cross, says he imputed righteousness to us. He gives us his perfection and his holiness by grace when we accept him, right? And it's called justification. And that's why he says, you know, in Revelation, the book of Revelation, he says, you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, right? You heard that verse? You've done it for me. He says, when you help all these poor followers and these people in jail and these homeless, he says, when you care for and love these people, it's just like doing it for me. Kind of like if somebody helps my kids. You treat my kids right, you treat me right. Now, that's like, you can be mean to me. I'm pretty thick-skinned for the most part, but like, Man, I gotta really pray to Jesus if you're messing with my kids. How many dads know what I'm talking about, right? Your mom and dad? Yeah, I'm like, okay, Jesus, help me. Help me live what I preach. <laughs> but that Jesus is like, man, we're the same. These are my brothers and sisters. You love them, you're loving me. 
And that's what he's raised up us up to. Because we know how precious and amazing he is. And he's raised us up that value by paying that price. That's why we call Jesus the great redeemer. I like saying, probably my kids are tired of me saying it. We don't call him the pretty good redeemer. We call him the great redeemer. Because he's really, really good at it. I wanted to preach this whole thing on just... He doesn't just redeem us from hell and bring us into heaven. He redeems everything in our lives. He could take that sorrow and bring it to joy. He could take that tragedy and bring healing. He could take these horrible situations. He can extract the precious from the vile and make it beautiful. He's so good at it. You know, so in the Old Testament, a redeemer would be somebody that say your family had tragedy and you left the land and you lost all your property and all of this, another family member, say like you're, you're, you know, the, the father died and the property changed hands, well, another person called a kinsman redeemer could come in, a relative, and they could buy it back at a, at a not increased price and give it back into the family. That's a, that's a redeemer. The definition in Greek and Hebrew, sometimes it's translated ransom, but it means to rescue from loss, to ransom or rescue from loss. It's something basically you get the impression that this thing is going to be destroyed, lost, or gone. Unless somebody steps in and rescues it. That's what Jesus did for us. You know why nobody wanted us at the yard sale? (laughs) <laughs> because it wasn't just that we didn't look that great. On top of that, there was a lien on us. You know what that means? That means you didn't just have to pay for it. You also had to pay. It, had, it owed money. There were bills on it. You know, if you buy a house, you got to make sure there's no liens, right? No construction liens because you're like, all right, I paid 500000 for the house. Oh, and then there's 150000 in liens on it as well. Well, our liens, the Bible says they're like this. If you calculate it out, it's like a billion dollars in wages. It's like this impossible to pay debt. Well, he paid for that. No human could pay it. Nobody's good enough. Nobody's good enough to pay that debt. 1 Timothy 2.5, it says, For there is one God and there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. So the tree is just another way to describe the cross. And so when Jesus hung on that cross for us, he took our sin. He took our imperfection. Nowadays, it's like, I don't know. That, my, my, I, I look at the, everyone like wants to think, you know, everyone needs like so much affirmation. You know what I'm talking about? I, I like affirmation. I like encouragement, but it's like, you know, apart from Jesus, we ain't that great. I'm just saying, like, anybody ever lie? You ever lie? Raise your hand. You ever steal? You ever have a bad thought? Right? You know, imperfect is imperfect. We all need that grace. We all need that forgiveness. So Jesus, he sees our value because he set the value. But here's the big question. Will we see his value? See, that's the important one. Watch this. I want to show you something. Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven, and that's referring to basically everything of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven just refers to all that Jesus did, his whole plan of salvation, everything. It says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and he bought it. 
So I don't know what normal real estate laws are here. I know in the Bible, if you bought a piece of land, you got everything that came with the piece of land. So he didn't steal anything. He just saw some, you know, maybe he was like a farmer and he was working the land and he saw like this treasure hidden in there. They used to sometimes, he didn't have any safes. So he would, if someone had money, you would hide it in the ground. That's why like treasure hunters go and find these pots of gold and things because somebody hid it in there and lost it or died or something and then somebody else goes and, and they find it. And so that's what happened. And so this guy, he went, and this first guy, he, he goes and he sells everything he has. He sold his car, his TV. He sold his camel, his whatever else, you know, all of his cool sneakers. He sold, he sold all his Air Jordans, everything. His collection, all of his games, whatever. He sold it all. And he's like, and he's like I'm going to buy this piece of land. You know, there was actually, there was actually a, uh, a couple in California back in 2013. They, they discovered, like, uh, I think it was called the, the Saddle Ridge Horde. They were, like, going through their land, and they saw a can sticking up, and they opened it up, and they found $10 million worth of gold coins in it. I know all y'all be, like, digging your backyard after Easter. You'd be like, oh, what are you? I'm listening to the pastor. I'm digging. <laughs> Oh, but this guy, he's digging, he's working in the field. He discovers this treasure, and he sells everything to go buy it. And the pearl merchant, same thing. Pearls were as valuable as, as diamonds. The guys used to take big rocks, and they would tie themselves to the rock in the Mediterranean, and they would jump in the water, and, like, people would drown trying to find clams to get pearls. And they'd sink to the bottom and find some clams, grab it, and hope there was a pearl in there. And so he had searched his whole life, this guy, and he probably had some money. I mean, if he was a pearl salesman, he had some money. And so he went searching his whole life. He sold all his pearls. He sold his boat. He sold everything. And here's the thing. These guys weren't like, okay, there you go. No, they're like, everything they had was no comparison to what they were getting. They were, like, happy to pay. They were like, <laughs> like when I bought that chess set, it was like $10. I'm like, take it, take it. I mean, sometimes I get these good deals. I could tell you, like, all these good deals that the God blessed me with sometimes. for our salvation. And that's not what is being said here. It's not like paying a bill. He got, but God does ask of things for us. But the little price, the little bit that we do is nothing compared to the value of what we get. See, it's not like paying a bill. They were so happy to pay it. One time, actually it was here back when, so if you're new, we've been here, Joanne and I have been here since May, almost a year, coming up on a, on a year. And time flies, huh? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's good. I'm just, I guess they like us a little bit. They like us that much, so that's good. We'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we, before when we were here as an associate pastor, they gave us a, a cruise, an all-expense paid Disney cruise. Remember that? How many remember that? It was pretty fun. And it was a surprise. Joanna didn't know about it. And it was like, it was like in a week. So we were like, you're going on a cruise next week. She's like, what? <laughs> it was fun. We had a good time. But we had to, we had to pay the tips. Like everything was paid for, the excursions, everything. But I said, you just got to pay the tips, you know, at the end. It was like a few hundred bucks. How stupid would we be if we said, ooh, we got to pay for the tips, I don't think I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm not going on the all-expense Disney cruise 
with the Tulum snorkeling excursion because I don't want to cough up a couple hundred bucks for the tips. Like, that would be dumb, right? We would not be discerning the value of what we're getting. That's when people be like, oh, I got I to gotta follow Jesus and like, I might have to change my life a little bit and trust in his grace. And, and even, even still, it's, you know, it's all by his grace as he, as he calls us forward, calls us to love him. I got to love people. Yeah, he, he does kind of like it when we love people. That's ah, too hard. You know what I say about that? That's stupid. <laughs> it's just as stupid. It's more stupid. I'm, I'm not saying you're stupid, because all y'all are smart here, right? Some people out there. Some, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not saying anybody's stupid. I'm just saying it's, like, it doesn't make any sense. It's because we don't understand. We don't understand how awesome and valuable and precious this thing is we have with Jesus. That's what I'm saying, because those guys sold everything, everything they had for that transaction. Now, why would they do that? Let me say this. It's not because the thing had value. Kind of. It's because they could discern the value. Because people miss things with value all the time. That's my bread and butter. <laughs> people who don't realize something has value. And, and so when we discern the value, that's when it happens. I, I got one more story for you. This one's pretty cool. So uh, one time I got to go to this estate sale, and it was an estate sale of an old movie or an old TV producer. His name, yeah, his name was George Geiger, and he retired down here. He, now this is going to definitely show some age. So all the young people be like, what? This is like before I was born. But you remember that show back in like the 80s, Hunter? Remember Hunter? It was like a, it was like a what was he, like an investigator show? And, and there was uh, Earth Final Conflict. Remember that one, a sci-fi show? It was weird. I didn't watch it. And, and then remember Scarecrow and Mrs. King? So some of you? All right. See? We got all ages here. How many be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, John? That's right. All right. <laughs> Some of you too spiritual. I don't, I don't watch TV. I just pray all day. You know, I just don't. Mm. But, but anyway, he had, he had produced these shows. And so I'm going through this, the sale. I got like his director's chair. And I got a, like different cool things. And I looked on the wall and they had this framed, it was a letter. And actually, I think we have a picture of it. You can put it up there. And, and it was this letter from a fan, like a little girl back in the 80s wrote this, and he liked it so much, he framed it, and he kept it. And so I was like, hmm, I don't, like, I don't know what that is worth, right? Like, what, how do you set a value on that? I, have no, I, I think it's probably worth something. I thought it was cool, so I bought it. And then, so I went and I opened up the frame, because I was like, maybe the letter has the return address on there. I could, like, find out who this was. So I open it up. See, this is just like one of the shows, right? This would make a good episode. Let's make a good episode. So I open it up in the back, and I see the, the envelope was there with the, the, girl's, the girl's return address. So then I started doing some Facebook stalking. <laughs> so you all need to secure your Facebook way better. I mean, just saying, you got way too much out there. So I'm looking at, like... I'm like, okay, this came from this region, this person, and I'm like looking, and I'm like, oh, used to live there. I'm like, I think it's this lady. So now this is, because this is, what, 30-something, 30, 30, almost 40 years later. So I messaged the lady on Facebook. She's totally psycho move right there, right? You know, I'm like, hey, I found this letter. You wrote it to this guy. I'm like, she's going to think I'm a psycho, why wouldn't she? And so I'm like, I'm just going to send it anyway. And so no response. And so I wait, and I wanted to like just give it to her. I was like, this would be cool, right? You know, if she could get it. And then, and then no response. And I was like, well, you know what also would be cool is if I made money off of it. So, and so I sold So I put it on eBay 
And so I sold it. And so this guy that bought it, he messages me and he says, hey, I'm writing a book on Scarecrow and Mrs. King. All right, that's cool. I mean, I didn't know that many people watched the show, but cool. All right. So, so he bought it. And then I'm like, cool, I made some money. Then a couple months later, I get in contact with this lady. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I, I, I already sold it, but you know what? I have some good photos I can give them to you. Well, guess what she says? This guy writing a book contacted me and reached out, and he, and he interviewed me for a chapter in his book. And I was like, well, do you want the photos? And she said, no, he sent it to me. Isn't that cool? And all this time, she had no idea that this producer had treasured her letter and kept it in his home. And then she found out, and she didn't know until somebody saw the value there. And you know what's so cool is, I was like, wow, everybody wins. (laughs) I got paid. (laughs) She got the letter. He got a story. She's happy. This is like the trifecta. (laughs) I know what happened. I got 300 bucks for that. I'll take it. But you know what's kind of neat, too? Is that the author paid the price to write her into his story. Let me tell you something. We have an author who wants to write us into his story. And he sees the value, and he's paying the price. He paid the price to get her in his story. Let's stand. I want to tell you something. He wants to redeem us. I don't know who's told you that you're not worth anything. I don't know who's told you or made you feel that way. But I want to tell you something. You are precious to the God of the universe that paid the ultimate price, the most high price. And I beg you to see the value in that. Because when we see the value and the price that he paid for us, it unlocks everything. It unlocks it all. So as we close, I just want to take a minute. Does everybody just close your eyes for a minute? Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes I call people forward. Sometimes I don't. Today I'm, I'm not going to, but we'll have, we'll have a prayer team up here afterwards if you need prayer. I'm just going to ask. I just want to give you a minute. I feel like, you know what? I don't want to be foolish. I want everything Jesus has for me. I want to accept his forgiveness. I want to receive that. Just raise your hand right now. and We're going to pray for you. I'm not going to call you up. Just raise your hand. You see a lot of hands going up. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody to pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross for me. Thank you for paying the price for my sin. world different. 